What's up, Bishop? How are you? What's oh happening God, in I'm these so streets? <laughs> oh my goodness. <gasps> I don't think we've ever gotten this long without seeing each other. It seems like you were in the Twin Cities like every five months there for a little bit. I know. It was like my delight to see you and your fiance, who's now, I mean, is she now your wife? She's my she's my fiance now. Okay. You you yeah, you saw her when she was in the, the final stages of being my girlfriend. And now yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I want to talk to you about that. So she coaches gymnastics. We've talked about this. Um, and I've been going to a lot of meets, you know, cheering up, which I see there's, there's a similarity between your music and gymnastics because gymnastics is a sport of vulnerability, but also confidence, right? You're launching yourself up in the air. You feel I'm me? I'm crying. <laughs> yes, that's and, very cute. and your music is like that. So, um, but these, these, these middle school and high school girls, at every meet, I can guarantee that we're here in uh, Wild Horses or River. You have a gymnastics anthem on your hands. You're kidding. Not at all. Not what? at all. What? Wow. I don't know what to do with this information. I, don't, I think you just put it back there. Just know that these, these really talented high school athletes are launching themselves up into the air to your music. That is so cute. How cute is that? <laughs> it's wonderful. Oh, it's, you, you should cry. Thank you for asking about her, by the way. Yes. That means a lot. Yeah, how are so, you guys doing? We're doing, you know, we're adopting a corgi tomorrow. <gasps> oh my I god! Know. Okay, I'm gonna live. I'm I'm living vicariously through. Just make an Instagram for it. Please. Oh, don't or, you worry. Or make turn your Instagram into just like a fan page. It's gonna happen. You okay. know it is. Yeah. Okay, stop conducting the interview. I'm okay. conducting the interview. Okay. How are yeah. you? What's popping? I'm good. It was funny. Like I was, I was thinking at the start of this, like. When quarantine was happening, obviously it was, you know, crazy and intense. But I think my first, you know, uh, thought was like, oh my God, I can like you know, play Sims for like a few days. Like this is crazy. Like the whole week I could just like play Sims. And then it was like, this is gonna be longer than a week, you know? And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, uh, I can play Sims for a few more days. And then like my characters, like I became like the best vet and like became like a perfect like parent and then and I was like okay like I started achieving goals in sims that I had like never achieved and that was like great but then I was like okay well I've done this you know and, and I'm not saying like I never became a scientist which is like a whole other thing yeah obviously like I'm not you know that you know I didn't go that far but um it's it's crazy because it did reach a point and I'm sure you feel the same, which is like, it reached a point where you're like, okay, like I'm gonna like, I'm gonna now find a middle ground of like working and I'm gonna try and find like my friends through like this and like, but I think the first week it started off so differently for me. Like it started off like, oh my God, like, okay, I'll just like play Sims, you know? And, mm -hmm. and by the way, I don't mean that to minimize the pandemic. That's not at all. Yeah. I'm just saying my, my takeaway that was like trying to be positive was like, oh, I could play Sims during this time. Um, but wow, it has changed. It has changed. I, well, I mean, no one's ever beaten the Sims and you got this close. <laughs> don't remind me. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Me. I think I went, I went the other way. I think a lot of people our age did this as well, where we don't get we haven't really had the luxury to work from home so we we really mm -hmm. put ourselves into into work and work all the time that's such a unhealthy mindset that you're like i need to be grinding all the time now that i like yes. you should be learning all these hobbies and yes. working out and come out with the quarantine bot it's like no reading yeah reading i'm yeah. gonna read yeah. and write a novel oh. yes yes no no i think i think instinctually you know like there okay so there is this book and I love that I say it as if like, and no one's ever heard of it, um, mm. called Eat, Pray, Love. Yes. Okay. Uh, it also turned into a, you know, movie with Julia Roberts. Um, but in this book, they talk about, um, she talks about her experience of going to Italy. And when she went to Italy, she noticed that people seemed happier. And she, there was this Italian guy that was talking to her. He was probably very attractive. But there was this Italian guy that was talking to her that just said, it's so interesting because the he was like from an outsider's perspective with uh, American culture and keep in mind I'm not even American you know so mm -hmm. but I've I've lived in the states for like ten years, um, and uh, but he said with American culture there is this uh, you have to earn your vacation, you know you have yes. to earn your time off, you know 
Um, or it has to be something totally out of your control, like you're bedridden for some reason, you know, or like you're stuck inside. Um, but you have to earn it. And then you get a vacation. He was like, but with Italians, that's not the case. It's we, it's a middle ground of like, I deserve a vacation whenever I want, even if it's at, and there's a part of it where you're like, you're having rosé at eight in the morning. Like, <laughs> I don't know about this, sir. Um, but each to their own. Each to yes. their own. Yeah. Yes. But it was an interesting, I, it wasn't so much, you know, an attack on Americans. That's not how I took it. But I thought it was interesting because I feel that so much, even with like advertising alone, it's mm -hmm. all kind of like, put your feet up now after a long day and now you can now you deserve that beer it's like all the advertising is kind of like you deserve it now now that you've worked yeah you know it's not like a day of like you know doing nothing you know whatever so mm -hmm. i think this kind of was like a i don't know if you felt this but i felt like it was a very interesting um like clash of soul you know where you're like mm. oh i need to like think about what really, you know, what, what, what really is life about and what are the things that I want to contribute to society and what are the things that I want to raise money for and what are, you know, and just like, I don't know if you felt that way, but that well, was. That's a, that's a great point. I think it, it acts as a reset. I do think those ads are kind of ingenuous um, or disingenuous where mm -hmm. it's like, oh, um, now when you, like we all seen the memes about like the emails, like, I hope this email finds you well in this troubling time. We must stick together. It's like, oh, this brand that I bought something from three years ago doesn't really. Um, yes. Yeah. This is the thing, but they would get backlash if they hadn't. If they hadn't, they would be like, wow, like, does Uber not care? You know, or like, you know, I mean, that's a bad example, but you know. What that's I mean. true. But I think, I think that speaks to, like, like you said, a clashing of the souls, a, a deeper issue where. Western society, not, this isn't an attack, this is just an analysis, a dissection, if you will. There's yeah. two friends dissecting culture. Yes. Um, where we've prioritized work and the grind and this dream so much that we feel bad for taking that time for ourselves and maybe this hard reset. I mean, again, I don't, like you said, yeah. I don't want to put the pandemic in light, but this no, is no, a no. way for us to, maybe the positive is maybe we can um, reinvestigate our work-life balance and how our personal lives uh, totally. interact and with work and it doesn't need to be all that we don't need to we don't need to like hurt ourselves you were touring for like two three years straight yeah about two albums in two years my yeah. goodness yeah maybe like, a third a long... which we'll talk about well this is the, yeah this is the longest that i haven't toured which is yeah it's it's interesting it's a whole it's a whole other you know like headspace and by the way I want to like make clear everything we're discussing. It's like, it's all like a side note from like what's happening. Like, I, you know, like I, I think, you know, I feel like I can speak for the both, both of us that, you know, we're really blessed. And um, yeah, I think, I think talking about like the other side and like the takeaways is more interesting, you know, than, than like, um, like, I don't, I don't want people to see it as like complaining or like ungrateful. I'm more so, and I, I feel like you feel the same. It's more so interesting to discuss just the change that has happened. You know, yes. it's not taking away from anyone on the front lines, obviously. hundred um, percent. And we're fully, interesting... we're fully in support with them. And yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's more fun to, not more fun. It's more, like you said, interesting as opposed to commiserate to yeah. analyze it and really like I said, dissect it and to, and to think about it in a really critical way yeah. with nuance um, and with, a, I guess, a cautiously yeah. optimistic mindset. And yes, and I do, I do find it interesting hearing how other people's jobs are doing in this. And that's why I'm like, how are you? You know, because mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I know the shifts that it's made for me. Um, and uh, like as a musician and as yeah. like, someone that tours, but it's kind of interesting. I don't know. I, I think it's kind of interesting as a listener to like hear, uh, you know, in, in other people's jobs, you know, what's the you know shift. But anyways, okay, I'm gonna stop controlling. Yeah. No, I, I, I love, we're just having a discussion. Uh, how, 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 have, how have you adjusted? What's, what's, the, what's the day to day like for you? Mm. Well, I made this wall. I love it. Like I, I, I wrote yesterday, which was really, really like good for my soul. I think the biggest shift that from the week one of quarantine, it's such a mean like week one versus today. Yeah. Um, but I think the biggest shift that happened during that time was, um, was just like leaning into being creative again, you know, like, and that happened honestly, like 
I, I gave myself like two days of, of playing Sims. Like I really, okay, it's longer than two days. Wait, you, you got all those accomplishments in two days? <laughs> <laughs> well, I did get like an award by Sims. Like I got like a notification that was like, you've played Sims for a while, but like I was like pulling all nighters. I definitely was like committing. Um, but I think the biggest uh, shift is like, yeah, I I'm kind of used to like running around like a headless chicken mm -hmm. while doing all this other stuff. So to kind of be in this space, like it's, it weirdly feels I have moments of feeling quite grounded. Like if I could always talk to you, obviously I would prefer for it to like, you were actually in my living room, but it's like, there's something kind of grounding just in this moment of like, I'm not like, oh, hey, like running, like, oh, like, yeah, like let's, let's, should we grab a photo? Like, oh, like I'm just running on stage. It's like, there is a part of like that that is really chaotic. And like, I feel like we always try to like find grounding in that. We're like, hey, let's talk for an extra 20 minutes even though like no one else is talking for an extra 20 minutes. Like, I feel like we always try and find that with each other, but there is something to say about like, it's a new experience to be like in my space, like having a sloth um, cup of coffee. I love it. And, um, and yeah, so versus touring, you know, but mm -hmm. I miss, oh, I miss it so much. I really, really like, I really like, I, I'm such a soul person and like when I even if it's only two people in the audience it's like it just it just gives me everything you know mm -hmm. and and even if there's no I mean it's I was gonna say even if there's no one but it's partly true you know it's like I think just having um oh no you know what it can't be no one it's it's there's two people there's at least two people yeah. but there's two people in front of me it's like that just it's um even if I'm sound checking and my sister is you know by the sound booth like you know it's I it just it's like it's um it means everything I think releasing a song recently like felt really good to just be like to just put something out you know and it's and wholesome just, it's about friendship yes yes uh, how did how did friends with Moby Rich come about how did, was that before I, quarantine. I actually wasn't like trying to transition into that, but I'm oh, very whoops. impressed. Oh, oh no! No, I'm impressed with myself. I didn't even click that. But um, yeah. So that happened. It did happen before quarantine. I had DM'd them and just was like, "Hey, like I don't know. I I know this is weird, but would you want to write with me?" And oh, and like it was the most insecure DM ever. And uh, they were like, "Oh yeah, sure. Like whatever." And um, no, they were they were sweet, but. Um, anyway, so we met up and I had this idea, I had this like really weird night um, where basically my friend was hitting on me. Oh. And I left that and I was like, well, like what's the way that I could like spin it that would be interesting, which is like, man, like that must be hard for that person, like mm -hmm. in that moment where like we connect so much, we're close friends, like, and they are like, wow, like this is a, you know, I feel like a connection. Like what must that feel like from their perspective? And so I started having my head like, I hate it, I want to be more than friends, you know, whatever. Yep. And then when I met up, I met up with them like two days later and I was like, I have this idea, like I, I want to make it quirky, you know, cause I don't want it to be cheesy or anything, but just that kind of like painful feeling of like, like I just decided because it was a friend of mine, I wanted to spin it in a way that like still felt good, which is like, they're not trying to be evil. It's just, it's hard when you have a base level friendship with someone, you know? Yeah, we've all it, had those moments where you're, you're friends yeah. with someone and there's like a, a just a smidgen, a smidgen yes. of, of a spark. And it's a really yes. tough, it's, it's tough for all parties involved where totally. like, do, do I pursue this? And then it, yes. like, do I receive this? I don't know yes. if I want to, but maybe I'm thinking from a perspective of, you know, friend zoning, even though it's not a real concept, it's actually very harmful and rooted in misogyny. But the, the, you know, that, that whole, you get, again, if we're talking about stipulations with core team, we yeah. gotta put stipulations on yeah. the friend zone, which is 100%. a very toxic yeah. idea. But I think for all intents and purposes, it's, so um, yeah. So I, I think the, the, the song is so catchy. It, it has, again, to use the word <laughs> smidgen, a smidgen of trip hop 90s influence. Is that accurate? Or where, where's the Yay! influence for the sound or the instrumental, how this all come, come oh my about? God. 
I am so happy you say that. Well, it was it was interesting because the day that we met up, um, we I pulled up and it was like in this beautiful home. Ooh. And that's totally fine, but it's like a bit threatening to walk into. <laughs> and then there was this like beautiful like puppy pit bull and all this stuff. And I was like, wow, like this is amazing. Like, oh my goodness. And they were like, yeah, like it's our man management's like place. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Cause I was like, I was so intimidated. Um, but um, they were like, yeah. Um, so we don't have like the laptop that we normally like work on. Um, you know, like we don't have our setup to record anything. And I was like, okay. And so we just recorded on our phones. And um, I, I tend to really like to start sessions just with like organ sounds. Um, we can for tell. Whatever reason. Yeah, I know. And I, sometimes when I'm in a session, I, I refrain from playing the chords that I normally want to because they're all minor. They're so mm -hmm. depressing. They're like, dun, dun, and I'm like, you know. And so I, I asked if they could like play some random chords and, um, and it kind of went from there of like in the room really organically, there was like some, uh, cause I was like, do you have organ, organ sound? You know, can you make this happen? And so there was um, organ sound happening and then acoustic guitar. Um, and it was just, it was like, all of it was done within like 15 minutes you know like it was, it was one of those situations it was yeah because it was just like i i felt really thankful that they were so open and when i said the like fe that feeling and i kind of played a little like voice memo i had um of like me like in the bath um singing it uh, great acoustics by the way <laughs> yeah great acoustic um they i was so thankful that they were open to it because because they are so cool I was like, oh man, like, I hope they don't think this is, cause I really didn't mean it in a cheesy way. I meant it in kind of like a heartbreaking, but like, it's okay sort of way. And they were like, but it's, you know, and then they just kind of, we just started like finishing each other's sentences and yeah. And then um, I think because it built from that organic place, I, I think when it did become it, when it went into like production zone, it was just kind of like enhancing those elements and then kind of bringing it into like today, you know? Mm. Was that different than from the, the process of Church of Scars or Champion, where it was lyrics first and then the instrumental? Or I don't want to I don't want to put words in your creative mouth. I, I I guess I just I hear the cohesiveness of both the projects, and it seems like you had the sound pretty well thought out. Whereas this one is it seems more fluid and different yeah. from your usual process. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, this one this one was similar in the sense that like I think the key to a strong song is being able to like play it in the room acoustically and be like, this could be cool, you know? And um, uh, so that was similar, but the production side of it, I, I am such a fan of theirs that I was like, oh, I kind of want to see what you do. You know, so it became, I definitely let them take the reins. So like the base of like, you know, uh, the lyrics and melodies and like everything we created in that moment of like just the guitar and, keys and like working on those chords I had a part in but the overall production I'm normally so much more involved but with this it was kind of a situation like you know when you're a fan of someone and, mm. and obviously if it turned out tragically <laughs> I would have been like <laughs> okay you know sorry guys but I went when I heard it for the first time I was like this is so cool like it just felt like such such an enhancement you know yeah like they were remixing your acapella almost like they didn't even, right. you didn't even have the track they were able to, to build right. off of it Right. Very, very Ooh, cool. Yeah. This is exciting. So uh, it seems like, so through your discography, you know, like we talked about two albums in two years, really quick turnaround. Church of Scars felt like you were letting the past die and, you know, mourning a period of life. Champion was mm. a self-empowerment, but also nuanced mm. uh, conceptually uh, album. And what, what albums are, or what themes or concepts intrigue you for the third, if, if, if I may pry? I... I, uh, okay, so I, when I came back from tour, so like probably like from January, like time frame maybe, you know, mm -hmm. um, I, I just, I kind of worked myself to the bone mm -hmm. in the studio. Um, I know it's a shock for you to hear. Um, and uh, I had this vision of the Olympics Ooh. Which then, when it got canceled, I was like, "We're going to be in Tokyo. We're going to go back and see what's well, up." Right, right. I oh, right, right, right. 
but I, yeah, so I had this, I had this vision of the Olympics more so in just like, wow, like you commit your life to something. And then I just started noticing like with, you know, when I think about like relationships, it's like you, like the thing that goes away when you like have a breakup is like all the dreams you had with that person, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, when I think of like the Olympics, I think of like, wow, like the trials and tribulations to even get there, you know? And um, so thematically, I mean, I know it's a bit bold, like thematically um, the Olympics, but thematically I, I, I had a lot of dreams about the Olympics and just the correlation between the Olympics and like when you really see a future with someone, you know? And I'm mm -hmm. speaking as if that's like distant from me, but I'm saying from my experience, from my experience and um, yeah, so. Ooh. I want to release a song. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I have a few songs. It's, it's, I was planning on releasing a song right at Coachella. And I was going to like perform it. Um, but obviously things got pushed back and it's, I, I'm finding a difficult time with like, I don't want to ever be tone deaf to like what's going on in the world. Yeah, of um, course. You know, um, but I also, uh, I also feel like the music that I want to put out kind of fits in with certain things that are certain themes that are happening. Um, but it's just about finding the right time. But my goal is to release a song or, you know, release a song or two in the summer. Like I, I just, we, I just want to, I really do. So I'm going to push for it. We want to play your song in the summer. We want to, it's going to happen. Thank you. So, so uh, that's, that's really one not what I was expecting at all. I was, I, think was, I, thought, I was expecting like, I'm going to investigate new sounds. Like, no, it's this wonderful Leonardo da Vinci painting of the Olympics. Which really? Is great. I, okay. I, that, that's crazy. I love okay. it. Thank so you. let's talk about, you know, you're no longer a rookie in the game. You're the vet now. You had, you had your critically acclaimed debut album. You had this oh really God. cool moment really? in time I, yeah oh church of scars is one of the best not just the best debut of 2018 one of the best albums of 2018 um wow. thanks for reading my articles on the website bishop <laughs> oh my god no i did but it's just this crazy like it's it's more so like hearing you say that you know now is like that's just that's really really kind of it aged really well and i think it was a really cool um uh snapshot of alternative at that time just like the electro yeah and, yeah and, and trap so, influences so funny because that was yeah you're right like that was so like in yeah yeah and, and i think i think you kind of like all right this is this is the best way to do it it's done now and then everyone kind of <laughs> got away from it because i think you did a great job yeah, i mean thanks. rivers and library and a bunch of radio stations like that's how impactful and how monumental it is crazy and then champion was an evolution of that you know more organic sounds yes um but still, you know, Jekyll and Hyde had, you know, uh, the same yeah. electronic electronicism, but yes. applied differently. Uh, what's it like going into the third album now that you've experimented with sounds and themes, you've done press runs and all these radio shows? What's the mindset going into it? Hmm. Well, it was interesting because with Champion, it was very like, without even thinking, I, I was like, oh, I'm not hiding. But like, I wasn't. I wasn't thinking of the repercussions of like being that vulnerable or honest. Um, and, uh, and repercussions as in like, just, you know, to have something out there that is, you know, very exposing and, and it's a, you know, kind of diary entry. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, I, I think with this next album, the, I love that you've like already, like, you already like, oh God, like how did this happen? Like how am I like dropping like album news? Um, I think, yeah, just with this next whatever, um, I think it's about, um, I really want to dive. I will say with the songs that I have written so far for it, I, I have, I have taken a little, dive into really really like gospel vocals and and just being like what would I want to perform live and which means like it's you know high energy but I also yeah like the the gospel vocals element of it I think is like big part of like my roots and like you know it's it's something that I I hope is like a staple in my music but I think with this next chapter it's been like 
how can I convey every emotion with every layer that I add to that choir that I'm creating, you know? We're talking 40 vocal tracks, right. thick, reverb, yes. recorded yes. in a church, like it was the Avid <laughs> Brothers. A hundred percent. I mean, even with like the um, Oh Happy Days uh, thing that I did, that mm -hmm. was like my incentive. You know, like I taught myself how to record, you know, myself. I, I just, I was like, okay, well, I have no choice now. Like I have to teach myself all these things, which I should have taught myself earlier, but I taught myself how to do all these things. And then I, I, I asked uh, this producer named Scott Chasek, who is incredible, by the way. But I asked him if he could uh, uh, add, add a few more um, chords to it. And he got like his organ player from his church. Oh, the best kind of organ player. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, you know, those are the things, like those are like the little decisions, like, you know, in the process of, making anything that it's like, those are things that like, I, uh, like I can't necessarily replicate, you know, like if I, if I wasn't an organ player in church, like growing up or whatever, like, why am I trying to replicate it? You know, rather than like turning to like an outside person and just being like, just like feel this and like, tell me what comes from it, which is basically what he did. And it was like chords that I would have never thought of, um, partly because, you know, they're joyful, but um, <laughs> chords that I would have mind. never, you know, instinctually gone to. So. I think with this next chapter, it's about like, uh, it's about like attention to detail and uh, hopefully making people feel something. Um, but one of the songs that I, well, I don't know. But one of the songs is, one of the songs is, is I, I think is really, um, uh, is, this, is, I don't know, is a song that people maybe wouldn't expect in, in a positive way that I think that I have been dancing to a lot. You are spilling so much tea. I feel like it's everywhere. And well, I, need... I have, like, honestly, nothing better to do. <laughs> like, literally, why not? Nothing better to do. Why not? You know? And I'm, and well, I'm we, we probably... appreciate it. I, I see. I, I had some with me, but then I, I didn't. I didn't. I, I drank it all. And I'm so sorry. Mm. Um, okay. We got some fan questions. I think we should wrap up with some fan questions. Okay. We got some really intriguing stuff. Oh, no. Um, they're, they're, this, these are really good. These people I, purposely, are very, I purposely, you know, try to not read the, you know, comments because I'm always afraid I'm going to see, like, I mean, I know when I say this, everyone's going to do this, but I'm afraid I'm going to, like, see, like, an eggplant <laughs> <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> or something, and then I'll be, like, talking about, like, soulful things, and then I see, like, an eggplant, I'm like, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, well, I did these on my Instagram, and I, and I, I went through all, I, I deleted all the eggplants and all the peaches okay. and all that. Great. Um, and I just, there's some, these people are so, like, people are so creative. They're better at journalism than I am. Um, oh my gosh. I'm nervous. I'm excited. It's, they're really good. If budgets and logistics weren't an issue, what Bishop Brig merch item would you want to create? Oh, um, uh, this is a true thing. Uh, yoga mat. Oh, that's great. I think, I feel like there is, cause like if I was working out, Cause I, I do this like thing called like hip hop yoga where you like, you do yoga to hip hop music and it's like quite intense. It's called Y7, highly recommend. But I would love to see like, you're a champion on the top of the thing, you know? And just be like, yeah, like I got this. Like I'm a champion, you know, I don't know. But like every it. time I write to the merch company, they're like, that's very hard to travel with. <laughs> I'm like, please make it work, you know, but yeah. I'm surprised you didn't see you didn't say Sims downloadable content like a like a bitch like the Bishop Briggs '90s hip hop well, shirt. From the I first wouldn't tour. I wouldn't sell that. I would give that for free. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Okay, Bishop Briggs, get to voice you get to voice a character in any animated film in history. Who is it? Oh. Oh. Oh, I'm gonna do um you uh you mean Hercules uh from uh, Hercules, uh, one of the gospel people. They're doing a remake. That could, you, could be in, you could be one of the, one of the five, what are they, the, the Well, th that's the thing. They're, well, you know the really curvy girl? And she's yeah. like, you mean Hercules. I, oh. I, lived, I lived for her. Yeah. So, so that, that one specific. Just, just that one yeah. line. Just that one line. Just that one. <laughs> like 20 takes of that one line, yeah. Who do you race as in Mario Kart? Mm. The uh, princess. Daisy or Peach? Peach? Those are the right answer. Yeah, Peach. He, whenever you I love Peach. 
whenever you let the computer races Peach, she kills it. You have to get that energy. I know. Yeah. You can't let Peach go. No. In your opinion, what are the top three definitive emo anthems of the mid two thousands, which are like the, the genre defying anthems? Of um, I would say, uh, okay, I would say I can even like look on my wall, but my uh, first instinct would be, um, uh, okay, here we go. Uh, I write, I write sins, not tragedies, by Panic of the Disco. Um, and by the way, I'm purposely not looking at you so I can remember these. Um, yes. Uh, uh, I would say uh, anything from Good Charlotte. That and, first album was so and, good. Right. And I would also, with Panic the Disco, say Lying is the Most Fun a Girl Can Have Without Taking Her Clothes Off. I loved that song, and that was like my sexual awakening. And then the third one would be um, My Chemical Romance. Uh, it would be uh, uh, I'm Not Okay. Those are three a good. Char- that, those are just the perfect dancers. Those are like good Charlotte's influence on just <sighs> pop punk and all. It's just mind blowing how we don't talk about them more often. Is disappointing as a it's society. It's crazy. I went. I went to their show, um, and I, it's like you, like, like they wrote, um, "I just wanna live." Da, 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 every day. And you're like, you wrote that, like these songs that you're like wow like that was a huge staple like you forget like you forget how many it's same as uh, my chemical romance you're like that was you guys like when you connect there are these like iconic songs that you're just like oh that's just in my head yeah and we were in middle school and that happens we were barely making our own musical decisions so to go right. back and be like wow you had that was yours wow yes i feel what's it. the I- one um What's the um, Good Charlotte one about uh, being famous? Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. That, that, is, that is the one that I, like, I think that would be, like, my Good Charlotte pick for just, like, the visuals and just, like, the F you to, like, society. And they were, like, they were so famous, <laughs> you know? And to just be, like, we don't care about it. And, like, they're, like, really annoying, you know, or whatever. It was, yeah. so, it was so rebellious. Like, you, you would, like, yeah, it just, it was everything. It was everything. I remember popping in, was it, The Young and the Hopeless, like into my computer to rip it. And then all of a sudden I pop up, like, do you wanna watch this music video? I'm like, yeah, sure. And that was just on the, I thought that was yes. revolutionary for 2004. Yes. And, uh, you know, LimeWire. Oh my goodness. What before, was it? before I knew, obviously, before I knew about like, you know, money exchange and, you know, like corruption and like all this stuff, I was like, LimeWire is amazing. Like the artists love it. So, like <laughs> I had such a, like, a false perception of what it was, but, my my like middle school self was you know I- involved. Hold well, on, I gotta switch from headphones to charging. I think I got like five percent left. I risked okay. it here. Okay. Okay. Right. And just for the record, you know, like if this is on trial or anything, no, I've never used LimeWire. Never. Wire. We've never. No one. No I one. I thought LimeWire was taking a lime and plug it into a wire. My yeah. mistake. Yeah. And then it ruined my the mistake. house. And, yeah. Um. Who is okay? This is an interesting question. Who's your favorite antagonist in movie history? Hmm. I love, um, I love the complexity of the Joker. Ooh. The, yeah. the, the Heath Ledger Joker or just Joker just in general? I, I probably, um, uh, Joaquin, Joaquin. Oh, yeah. Oh, the more recent one. Yeah. Yeah. I love, and I, like, I love the Heath Ledger one, of course, obviously. Um, but I think the depth that they went into with that of just being like, there are reasons that people are the way they are, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it can, you know, and just like the variations of like, I don't know, like just the idea of like, when a child is born, are they evil? It's like, I, you know, it's very hard to piece together, you know? You understand it and you can, it's believable. Right, You're not yes. just like, a, you're just like, you're not just like Lex Luger, rich guy with power. Totally. Power hungry. Like, 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 you know, with, um, what's his name? Uh, what's the guy, uh, the one with the uh, Bane or uh, Bane? Yeah. What's, what's his name? Bane. Bane. Yeah. Like, what's, what was his, what's his story about? Like, I would have loved to have, like, he like came out of the womb and he's like, oh. Like maybe yeah, he has like yeah. asthma or something. Like, tell me that. You know, <laughs> well, he got like, beat up and was mad. <laughs> That's all right, right, right. So I love, I love the depth of the Joker. 
Yeah, and, it, and yeah, that's it, when you can see yourself in the antagonist, but you don't like them, but you can still see yourself. That's really jarring for the audience, and I think yes. that's, what us, that's what I think we want to see that comp. We don't, we don't know we want to see it. We don't really want to admit it, but it's intriguing and magnifying. Yes, when you're going and that's and that's what I think you know kind of turns it from a movie you're watching to like a psychological thriller. Yeah, yeah. and analysis. Yes. Yeah, and then final question: We started off with something like this, and we're gonna end with this—a full circle. Okay, here we go. Um, like I said, you know, we had like, we saw you like four or five times in concert in the course of like every six months you were in town. What's your favorite Minnesota memory? Uh, oh, oh, there are so many. And I'm not just saying that there are really, really so many. It's like, it's, it's funny that you say that when you're like, you came so often. It's like, yeah, like I literally like called the booking agent. I was like, please, like, let's make it happen. Um, I think, I think up there on favorite memories was like that time uh, when the show was sold out, like mm. crazily sold out. Um, they all were. All the shows that you've done with us have been sold out. <laughs> that was very kind. Um, what was that show? Uh, that was the first one at Fine Line. That one was super sold out. Yeah. Um, my, my, my first instinct was like that moment where I was with you and your then girlfriend. Mm. And I was like, this is so crazy. And you were like, you, you both were like, um, you, you just said, you're like, you have to understand that this isn't crazy. Like, this is what, and it was like, it was a very, I don't know. It just like, it was a moment that like meant a lot to me. And uh, it was, you know, it's very rare that you like have those moments backstage, whether it's before or after a show where you're like, you know what, like, let me just enjoy this moment. Like someone says something to you that you're like, cause I was so nervous, of course. And mm -hmm. I was like, this is so crazy. Isn't this crazy? Like, this is, this just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. And you guys were both like, it does. Like, yeah. You know, and like, this is, this is like what is, you know, and so I don't know. For some reason, I feel emotional thinking of that, but it just, it was, I definitely like a top moment for me, I would say. That was, yeah, that was, that was backstage at First Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, it was, yeah, and then I think I might have eaten, you know how Glam Doll Donuts, they always make you that donut that has your name on yes. it? Yes. I think, I, I, think, I think you gifted what? me one, and that was yes. very kind of you, and it was delicious. And yes. now I'm getting emotional. Ah. I know. Because it's it's hard thinking of like, like, okay, I'm the person that if I am in 7-Eleven, you know, before I check out, you know, with my various items, all chocolate, before I check out, it's like always like chocolate and Gatorade. It's really weird. But before I check out, I, you know, will be like, how's your day going, blah, blah. And you'll, you know, maybe you'll have a friendly exchange where they're like, oh, this crazy person came in or whatever. And I think it is hard sometimes to talk, like in this moment, in this period of time, it's hard to think of a time where like, I wasn't thinking about germs. Like when I was talking to you and your then girlfriend, now fiance, like I wasn't thinking about that at all. I was like, like, I want more of you. Like, give me a hug, like blah, blah. And now I think it's like, when I think, it, I think there is gonna be a total culture shift after this. And, and I think it will be a second before it becomes normal, but like, now, if I'm at 7-Eleven, they're like, hey, like, you can't, you know, like, what are you trying to do? Like, you can't stand in front of me for this much longer, you know? Yeah. Or there's you can't barriers. browse the Gatorade aisle. You can't go between Fierce Grape and Sherry and one of the three blue flavors. You have to <laughs> exactly. Know your game plan. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, so I think, I think the reason why we both feel kind of emotional is like, I, I definitely, like, I miss that. You know, mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. Well, hopefully we can get that soon and safely, yes. of yes. course. <laughs> yes. Um, Bishop, thank you so much for 40 minutes of your time. Thank this you. This was so, so fun. fun. This was, was so great. fun. You're the best. You're the thank best. You. And uh, I can't wait to see you again. And uh, stay thank safe you. and sanitized, all right? Thank you. And last thing, let me know what happens with the Corgi. I, I'll, pictures will be coming to you 201 tomorrow, great. okay? Great. Okay. Thank Bye, you. Bishop. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.